to talk to the two of you. No, chat Seriously. I've got a proposition to put to you. What bit of nonsense is in your head now? Dad, you know how you've often talked about going into business on your own? I might have talked. Well, I've been doing some thinking. Wait for it, Tom. No, just hang on a minute. Thanks, Uncle Tom. You see, I don't see why the two of you shouldn't set up in business together. Now, hang on. Why not? You couldn't fail. No. All you need is a shop. Oh, she says. Shops are not to a penny, you know. OK, but say a shop could And be then found. there's the wee bit matter of the money. Have you ever heard of that substance, madam? You've got a bit put by. A very small bit. How much? I'm no telling you. You wouldn't need a great deal. I've got a wee nest egg, too. We used to talk about it, mind, Andrew. Even started saving. Oh, that was years ago, Tom. Before inflation. Ah, but there's plenty of work about. You must admit that. Oh, aye, we're kept at it right enough. But I get tired of working for other people. <laughs> I wouldn't mind some of the profits for myself for a wee change. You see, Uncle Tom likes the idea. Aye. It's great talking about profits. But how'd you get hold of the work in the first place? Nothing. To it. Is that a fact? You advertise, you do it with a bit of style, attract attention, then just wait for the artist to come in. Oh, I. You try it then. I would if you give me the chance. I could do the publicity. Mum and Aunt Jessie could be receptionists. I'll give Mum an outside interest. Are you serious? Why shouldn't I be? It's quite a feasible proposition when you stop to think about it. McKinley and Campbell, plumbing engineers. Hey, <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> Ah, you're both off your heads. Dad, you have to take a chance sometime. Lassie's well, right, Andrew. If you get going, I'll say that much. I could say a lot more. Here, take a drink of beer and come to your senses. You know, I wouldn't mind setting up a business in my own. No, I would not mind that at all. You mind what? I was just discussing with Andrew setting up her own business. As plumbers, you mean? Well, hardly as racetrack bookies. idea. Here are you in business together. <laughs> well, I think it might be. You can get your fingers burnt too damned easily. Do you remember Harry McConkie? He went bust after six months. And then Dave Owen started up that fancy good shop. In a slum clearance area, Dad. Don't give us all the failures. I thought make it as well. Maggie's right, you know, Andrew. Look at your... Oh, what's his name? Robertson from the street. Now, he made a fortune. Yes, I so he did. I don't see us making a fortune. You're in favour, are you, Aunt Jessie? Aye. Well, why not? Might as well gamble once in a while. <laughs> Mum? Oh, I wouldn't be against it, especially if you went into the business, Maggie. Now, Mum, I'm going back to school. You agreed. I wouldn't say that. You and your dad bullied me into it. Just call me Hitler. Well... You'd all fixed up behind my back, didn't you? Well, let's forget that just now. We're talking about setting up the plumbing business. You're for it, aren't you, Uncle Tom? I don't see why not, Andrew. So what'd you say then, Dad? You haven't given us an answer yet. Oh, all right. Yo! I'll think about it. If you can find a suitable shop at a suitable rent, that is. Aye. Well, might be quite a job, that. Eh? Oh! 
Oh, Maggie's great at rummaging a boot. <laughs> suitable shop at suitable rate. The things I let myself in for. Jogging would be easier. <laughs> oh, my muscles feel like old elastic bands. Out of condition, eh? Oh, I've never been in. <laughs> Have you made any progress? Uh, not really. I've been to every estate agent in town, but I felt they weren't inclined to take me too seriously. No? Oh, I put on my best Kelvin side accent. I told them that my father and my uncle were thinking of setting up in the plumbing and sanitary engineering business. <laughs> Did they give you any addresses? Oh, aye. And the prices? I wrote them down without batting an eyelid and said I'd be in touch. <laughs> well, what about your advert? Oh, I've had a few replies. I went to see one this afternoon. Whereabouts? Land's end, near enough. No good. There's stuff grown up the walls and the place stank so you could hardly breathe. So is what the staff room. <laughs> the man said it was nothing a bit of elbow grease wouldn't remove. She just tack a knife to it, lass. Well, I don't know. You're not giving up, are you? Well, maybe it is a crazy idea after all. I mean, us McKinley's in business. We can scarcely keep ourselves in order. Don't be daft. And think of your mother. I do. Every time I fall off the bike. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all right. Don't worry, I'm not going to throw in the towel yet. And when James comes on Saturday... I was going to say, if he wants to stay the night, he's very welcome to our spare room. Oh, could he? I mean, are you sure you wouldn't mind? Of course not. Oh, great. I'll phone him on the way home. Oh, do it here. Half the boxes don't work anyway. <laughs> Dad! Uh, that's... Dad! that's David calling. Yes, dear. And it's you he wants. Have you done that English essay? Ah, yes. Maggie, you really mustn't let this shop business interfere with your work. I did my bit talking your father into the idea of a sixth year in university. You see you do your bit getting good results. I won't let you down, I promise. It's not me that matters, it's you. What do you drink water, Dad? All right, I'm coming. I haven't even started the essay. Tough, isn't it, when you got pressures from all sides? Hey, do you want to make that phone call? Yeah, thanks. I'll leave you in peace. Oh, hello, Mrs. Fraser. It's Maggie here. I really did enjoy the weekend, by the way. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. Is James in? Oh, I see. Well, could you give him a message then, please? Could you tell them that my friends the Scots can put him up on Saturday night if he'd like to stay? He can... Oh, well. Sorry. Oh, well, thanks a lot. See you sometime. Bye. David wants his teddy. That was quick. Well, I didn't get past James's mother. James is writing an essay, she told me, and she didn't wish to disturb him. He has to work hard to get into medical school and mustn't be distracted. She sees you as a distraction, no doubt. Ah, like a fly flapping round her head. I asked her to give him a message. I wonder if she will. From what you've said, she'd be too honourable not to. Mummy. <laughs> match today. Oh, important. Ah, but if we win today, we're through to the quarter oh, I didn't realise you'd get that from. You don't listen, do you? You'll need to eat something. I'm not hungry. Butterflies are flying in my tongue. There will be something flying at your head in a minute if you don't shut up. Now, Sandy, don't start working off your football leg on here. Are you going to shut your face? Can't you take a joke? Look at that work. Lay off him, Maggie. 
Maybe butterflies are flying in your tongue too. You're bringing this James Fraser up to meet us. I want me to see. She's ashamed of us. Who wants to see your toffee nose boyfriend? He wants to pack in several shops to look over. Oh, he'll push in his car no time at all. Oh, he's got a car, has he? Better than a nasty motorbike, eh, Mum? It's his mother's. His father's got one in all, though. And his grandfather. Haven't they, Maggie? Remind me not to tell you anything ever again. Or oh, the toast. You never catch him in your cooking. I don't catch him. Oh, you need to bring him up to meet us, though, Maggie. I'll put bringing it to the match. I don't suppose it's his scene, though. You and Jackie coming, Jean? Mm. Ah. What will we have? We can't we just have sausages? Certainly not. It depends how much money I've got. Where did I leave my purse, Jean? Has anybody seen Mum's purse? On your bed, then. Mm. Wait till we see me. Better your Saturday job folded. Is the not for the shop clothes? No. Anyhow, for the rich boyfriend like James Fraser, she'll not need to work. I'm not rich, I'm just comfortable. That'd do me fine. Oh, that's disgusting. Anyway, I must fly. Well, good luck, brother. Seems it's square between the posts. Don't worry, I will. You'll mind and ask him up now for no, his tea. All right, I will. I must see my head examined. Bring it him amongst you lot. Uh-huh. You will watch what you say. What do you mean, watch? You have to mind your P's and Q's. You won't make any meaningful remarks, will you? Wait, when's the big day to be, James? Oh, very funny. Seems our Maggie's quite wound up about this lad, eh? See my strip, Mum? Eh, uh, we tried the airing cupboard. Now we'll need to plan the menu. You know you're more yeah. interested in that twit from Edinburgh than my game this afternoon. He seems quite wound up, I know. <laughs> what a family. You're the only easy going one, Jean. It's not there. you think I was a servant in this house, wouldn't you? It's very good of you. Not at all. We love having visitors, don't we, Maggie? Mm. The house is usually full of kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's awful quiet. They're at a birthday party. Peace for a couple of hours, mm. eh? <laughs> By the way, I've got some news for you. I've seen a shop. Oh, Fantastic! Okay. Oh, is it? Mm. Every time we hear one, we think it's going to be great. Then one foot inside the door... Yeah, we saw some horrors this afternoon. You wouldn't believe the dumps. No, this one is really good. It's round the corner on the main road. It used to be an electrician's. What about the rent? <laughs> it didn't seem too bad. I had a word with the owner, Mr... Um... Henderson. And there's a flat above the shop. You're joking! Yeah. Four rooms, but none of them oh, are large. Oh, they're postage stamps. And the whole place needs to do it. Oh, oh like a pain. Oh, I'm handy with a paintbrush. Oh, I just think we might be living around the corner from you. Ah, oh, you'll be able to hand in your English essays out of hours. I'm going to do it honest, Mr Scott. Cross my heart, this weekend. This weekend. I will. But the shop, Janet, do you think we've got a chance? Well, Mr Henderson said he'd be there between three and four this afternoon. Oh. Do you think the flat might be big enough? There's not an awful lot of accommodation for five people. Oh, my sister and I share a room, anyway. Eh? You could get bunk beds. And yeah, my brother could have the smallest room. That'd leave one for my parents. Tough have to eat and sit in the kitchen. I'll put plenty of folk to that. Bless him's pretty dry, anyway. Oh, it is. Like a bone. This will do very well for a shop, Maggie. And they can keep their stuff in the back room. Oh, the downstairs is perfect. Mm. It's just a case of getting Mum and Dad to accept the flat. Mm. I'm sure Mum will. Uh, would you like to make an appointment to bring them round? Oh, yes, it would. When would suit you? Oh, they could come this afternoon, if you like. Oh, I'm afraid my dad's at the football. My uncle, too. <laughs> Fingers crossed Sandy's team's won. I hope so. How about tomorrow afternoon, then? Well, oh, that'd be fine. Say three. Friend of yours? Uh-huh. Hiya, Mike. Hi, Maggie. Mike, this is a friend of mine from Edinburgh. James Fraser. James, this is Mike Bruce. Hello, Mike. Been for running your bike. Been working on it. We'll always be getting on up. I'll be seeing you.
you took some of yourself, huh? Oh, we can study. Not your family, dude. Andrew, do you think maybe we could put some of this stuff away? Come on. See why I have to wear a jacket in my own house. Oh, it, we're in the sitting room, dear. Uh, mum, Dad, this is James. James Fraser. James, this is my mum and my dad. Pleased to meet you, James. And you, Mrs. McKinley. How do you do, Mr. McKinley? No bad, thanks. Uh, would you like to sit here, or would you uh, would you prefer the settee? Oh, anywhere at all, I don't mind. Floor will do. Oh, you can <laughs> sit. Uh, would you like to sit in, in the chair by the fire? Sit down. In his house, you can hardly find a seat for the rubbish that's lying on. <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> True. How did Sandy's team get on, Dad? They won. All good. Uh, yeah. Only just mind one nil. It was a close thing. The other team nearly equalised right at the end. Oh, as long as they won. I've seen Sandy play better. Well, don't tell him that. <laughs> Where did the flowers come from, Mum? Jean got them for me. She did not pinch him out of a cemetery, if that's what you're thinking. Andrew. Well, I must say that flowers do make a difference in a house. <laughs> I expect your mother always has flowers, James. Uh, usually a bunch of half-dead wild ones in a milk bottle. <laughs> A milk bottle. <laughs> she can never find a vase. Or if she does, it's cracked. <laughs> Do you know Glasgow at all, James? Uh, not much, I'm afraid. You come through for the big game, though, eh? It means Hamden. Scotland versus England. Uh, no, actually, I haven't. you never been to Hamden? Oh, he's a rugger supporter. Oh! Oh, I think rugby's a very nice game. I've always wished that Sandy <laughs> would have taken it up. nothing nice about rugby. We kick one another in the head as soon as blink, and anywhere else they could reach. <laughs> Maggie! <laughs> Fancy never having been to handle. <laughs> you think Prince Charles was coming to dinner? Only Prince Charming from Edinburgh. Uh -huh. I seem to have got landed by playing Cinderella. Oh, poor thing. Slaving away in the kitchen whilst ugly sister's out having a ball. Super smell. Chicken. And look over there. Wine. <laughs> Mum's really getting over the top, isn't she? She's even baked a cake. Never. It must be years since she last baked one. <laughs> Looks it too. She wasn't going to be outdone by that Mrs. Fraser. Yeah, uh, she'd never have told what a marvellous baker she is. And look, Mum's scones. Oh no, not again. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. Poor Mum. We'll eat them till the last crumb and pretend they're as light as snowflakes. If she hadn't got herself so worked up. Oh, it's done her good to have something to think about. I'll find something else for her to think about too. What? A shop and a flat. Brilliant! Uh, another piece of chocolate cake, James. I uh, know, thanks, Mrs. McKinley. I couldn't, I'm afraid. No. It's very nice, though. Uh, well, uh, take a wee scone, then that'll fill a wee corner. <laughs> oh, cleave the lad alone, Nan. And you want him to burst all over the table? <laughs> well, I think I'll just have one more. No, oh, it deserves a VC for bravery. Any more wine, Dad? Aye, pour on, Andrew. I have another bottle in the cupboard. Go and get it, Jean. Must think your coupon's coming up. I expect you always have wine with your meals, James. Uh, usually at weekends. Uh, his mother makes elderflower wine and rhubarb. <laughs> rhubarb? Yeah, I know. I'm not too keen on it myself. Much prefer this. Oh, eh, eh. I'll go. Well, fill up James's glass, Andrew. Thank you. Oh, hello. 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 You're still at your tea? Oh, I never realised you'd visit us. <laughs> oh, it's just James and Jessie. Did Mum not tell you he was coming? It's Andy, a couple of glasses. So, this is your young man from Edinburgh, Maggie. I'm ever so pleased to meet you, James. Hi. We've heard that much about you. Hello, Jamesy. I I'm Tom. 
Sit yourself down, son. Finish your tea. Don't let us stop you. No, 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 Jean, go and get some chairs from the bedroom. Ah, come on, hen. I'll give you a hand. Oh, here. Hey, congratulations, by the way. Oh, I played a real rubbish game. Oh, nonsense. So you missed one chance. I'll get picked for the semis, though. Of course you will. Team couldn't do with you, eh? Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. I'm coming, Jean. Coming. I'll just squeeze in here. <laughs> Mm. Looks like I came at the right moment. Aye, you're good at timing things, Jessie, I must say that. <laughs> <laughs> we could do with a bigger kitchen, James. <laughs> nice looking lad, Maggie. You've got taste. Pay no attention, James. My family oh. just opens its mouth and lets all the gadby oh, just spill out. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's to your first visit to the McKinley's, James. And may it not be the last. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Uh, have a piece of chocolate cake, Jessie. Don't tell me you baked that yourself. Last time you baked a cake, it must have been for Aunt Flurry's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't get this jacket off me, the rest will be eaten at my funeral. <laughs> I'm fair roasted in here. It is a bit warm. Do you mind if I... Oh, certainly. Make yourself at home, James. Aye. You tuck your feet well under the table, lad. Did you enjoy your meal then, Dad? It was no bad. I must say. Jean did all the cooking. Compliments to the chef. It was nothing. Ah, you'll make some man a grand wee wife, hen. And you're no a bad cook either, Maggie, when you try. <laughs> and Jessie, you know I can't cook for toffee. Well, you could soon pick it up. She could, you know. She's smart enough to pick up anything she wants. I'm sure. You better watch it. You'll be giving me a swollen head. No, I don't encourage her. She's bad enough already. <laughs> <laughs> Dad? Mm. Since you're feeling nice and mellow... Go oh, hey, wait for it, Andrew. She's after something. <laughs> James and I saw a shop today and a flat. A flat? Oh, Mac. It's near where the Scots live, in a good position on the main road. On the main road? It's vacant just now, and the rent's pretty reasonable. I made an appointment for you and Uncle Tam to see it tomorrow. Ah, I see. Yes. Now, listen, Maggie. Maggie. I never said... You said if I found a suitable shop at a suitable rent, you'd consider it. Aye, that's right. Consider it. Doesn't mean I have to see it. Oh, oh come Dad. on. I yes. need to go and see the place at least, Andrew. I'll do only what I choose to do. Pardon me. A flat, you see. How many rooms? Four. We've got five here. Oh, but Andrew. we don't like it here. Andrew. There's the bell. Oh, saved by the bell, so he thinks. Sandy, would you, you go and... She's got a job as a doorman. Andrew, please go and see this flat. No, you never know. It might be bigger than you think. Look, Maggie's made the appointment, Andrew. Now, listen, it's going to cost us... All right. Oh, go and see you it. go. Andrew, we're only asking oh, oh, you oh. to see it. Oh. We're just asking you to see it. A, a telegram. Oh, no. Here, Nan. The last time a telegram came to our house was to say your mother had died. Aye. Granny. Couldn't you? It's addressed to you, Dad. Won't it? Aye. Mrs. McKinley, take a no. Same Donnie Brown. He's got the croft next to Grant's. Let me see it. What does it mean, take Nell? Why couldn't he say what it is and how serious? Trust Donny Bruni. Was I a bit thick in the head? Oh, maybe it's nothing much. Is there nobody you could phone? What about the doctor? She hasn't seen a doctor in years. She doesn't believe in them. Oh, Dr Grant died five, six years back anyway. I don't know where the nearest man would be now. Donny's not on the phone. There's only one thing for it, then. Somebody'll have to go up there and see how she is. So far, it's so many 
so far, so far, so good. Maggie, so far, so far, so good. Maggie.